By the end of this video, you would have learned how to do more scene building, like adding all of these lights across your scene to your pillars and columns, and even adding that extra light rim to the edge, and also controlling all of them using a single material so that your spaceship can start looking really cool. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to chapter nine of our Unreal Engine Beginners Tutorial Series. In this chapter, we are going to cover scene building. We are going to decorate our scene with lighting. Are you frozen? I'm Come lagging. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are going to be doing some scene building. And if you look closely to our reference image right here, we have all these sexy lights that are on the pillars. That's why we built these pillars. That's why we even have these little windows in there so that we can decorate it with emissive lights. We also have more lights in the small pillars, right? They're different. We have the small, big, small, and then here we have these uh, uniform lights. And that's what we're going to create today. Plus, we're also going to create this extra extra part in front of our spaceship, which is going to add to the coolness of it. That big, giant LED that goes all the way around. LED? I don't think that's an LED. That's not a <laughs> Star Wars. Whatever it is, yeah, they don't have LED. Whatever it is, we're going to add that light. So, Farhad, are we ready? Let's go. Okay, so in order to create our lights, we're going to go back to the roots Go back to the modeling tab to begin creating the shape for our lights. So go to your modeling tab. And then I'm going to bring this guy here so you guys can see what we're clicking on. And then we're just going to come to the middle of the scene. We can create our lights right here in uh, on the floor. So for our lights, we found out that rectangles will be the best to begin with because we can make them round. So we're going to go to rectangles. And then as you can see, if I place it anywhere on my floor, it's just going to create it. So let's just place it here. And then I'm going to raise it up because it's like in the in the floor. We don't want that. And then Farad, what should we do with it now? First of all, make it look like a rectangle and make it rounded corners. I like that. So let's create these lights first, right? The small ones. Yes. So to make it rounded corners, we can change the type of rectangle to round it. Perfect. Yes. And then we're going to play with the width and the depth to create that look. And actually, we just did. Yeah. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Yay. OK, so this as you can see, this is a big this is a big one or is this small? We can one? always make it smaller okay, anyways, yeah, yeah. right, with the scale. I think this is pretty good. Sure. And this is going to be accepted, right? Make sure we accept it. And we're going to just pull it here. This is going to be the light itself, but we also need the base for the light, right? Yes. And we don't have to go too crazy with the detail here because it's going to be always far away from the camera. So all I'm going to do is just go ahead and duplicate this, hold Alt, bring it down, right? And then slightly scale it up with R and then scale it up so that it can just be underneath it and act as the base. The base. And I can actually scale it a little bit wider. I actually don't like that it's snapping on the scale. And then I'm going to make it a bit smaller. What do you think about that? I Farad? think that's good. Okay. Do we need to extrude them? Absolutely, because right now it's flat. Yeah. Right. That's not gonna. That's not gonna that's work not gonna for work. us. And we're just gonna select the upper one, and then we're gonna go to Model, Poly Group Edit. You guys should already know this. And then we're gonna hit the face, and then we're gonna say, okay, we want to extrude this. So hit extrude, and it then guess what? Much. It's going to extrude. Right. We are gonna change this click in viewport to fixed, and then I'm gonna go into negative value. All right, because I want it to go down. And then just see, like, okay, it's going way too low. We don't want that. We just want this to be like um, maybe negative five. Let's see. Um, no, negative, negative 15. Okay. I think that's pretty good, right? Negative uh, 15. No, this is perfect. It can, oh, yeah. it can go below yeah, the yeah, base. Yeah. That's okay. completely fine. Now, I don't know if this is going to happen, but before we extruded this for some reason, because the bottom part was uh, duplicated from this, it also extruded that, which is like, Thank you. Automatically doing it for us. I don't know if it's going to work here. So let's hit accept. Yeah. It did. I don't know. I think it's because it's a duplicate. It Just automatically. Yeah. We know it. 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 We knew it. They knew it. But in case it didn't work for you guys, just go ahead and do exactly the same thing yeah. to the base. Right now, see, we have two rectangles, rounded rectangles. One is going to be our emissive light, and the one at the bottom is going to be the metallic base. Right, so we're gonna go out of the modeling tool really quickly just to show you guys what we got. Looks absolutely perfect. We're gonna rename them just so we know what they are. So lights. So Faris, can we go now and create the lights for the smaller columns? Yeah. So the smaller columns, they have no base, 
right? It's just like a small light and a big light and a big light and a small light. So we're just going to have to create two more versions right now for the smaller columns. And they have to be slightly thinner. So let's go back to the modeling tab. Let's go to rectangle and then place it here. Raise it up. This is way too big. So we're going to control the width. No, the width is fine. Control the depth. I would say, oh, this is this is actually... I want to go ahead and play with the corner radius. Make sure it's round, super round. I like this for maybe let's the see, small one. The small one, and then we're gonna make one more for the bigger one. I'm just gonna make it a bit like, oh no, I have to play with the corner radius again. It it gets ruined for some reason. Okay, I think this is good. I like this, but more rounded. For, more yeah, rounded. more rounded. Okay, yes, cool. This yes. is good for the small one. Okay, I want and it to be exact same then width. Then Change the depth. Yes. yes sorry. Longer, longer, longer. Same depth, but different width. Yes. yes. I think... No, a bit longer. A bit longer? Yeah, good. Okay. All right, you cool. are good. Thank you very much. Is it the same width? Absolutely the same. Sure. Yes, perfect. Okay, this is great. Now, we need to go ahead and extrude both of them. So, this one time, we have to extrude both of them separately because they're not duplicated. Polygroup edit. Select. Extrude. That is perfect. The value from before is there. Hit accept. Do the same thing here. Polygroup edit. And select the face. Extrude. Boom. That is perfect. And hit accept. So now we have the small light, the big light, which is going to be used for the smaller columns. And then we have this uh, light with the metal base. So before we go ahead and arrange them and duplicate them and even merge these two together to become one mesh, we have to go ahead and apply their materials, right? Just yes. to make sure they're working fine. So... Let's go back to the selection mode. And in order to create these materials, let's open up our content drawer. Let's go to our materials. And then I'm going to create a new folder. Call it light, oh, lights. light materials. Yeah, yeah. Right? Light materials. And then inside light materials, I'm going to create a new material. Right? Call this um, emissive, light emissive. Light, yeah. Yeah, light emissive. And this one, I'm going to create an instance for it automatically because we know we're always going to use it. And let's apply this emissive on top of this light and also to this light and to this light. We just want the same material, same color. You can then create more instances if you want to change the color. Remember, we did that in the first chapter of materials. And for the base here, let's go to our starter content. We're just going to use one of the materials. Metals, yeah. One of the metal materials. Which one should we go for? Go Me for metal steel. Okay. I think that yeah, why not? Good. Why not? Let's do that. So metal steel, drag it, drop it. Yeah, that looks Perfect. Fine. Yeah, this is going to be good. So Light our, it up. Yes, we have to go to our light materials. Farad, you got to guide me here. Yes. How do we light this up? Emissive color. Let's go. Okay. So Add an RGB. Three, left click. Yes. Okay, bring this here. Do you want to control the intensity? Absolutely, maybe yes. Want, yes, Absolutely. do an M. Okay, so maybe change this to white so we can see. Hit OK. Apply. Just to see the difference. Boom. Okay, they're working. Now, a multiply node. Yes. And? And make it a parameter. Make it a parameter. Yes. So here's another tip. We know about one, and then right one left click, and then right click to convert to parameter. We know about the scalar shortcut. There's also another way. If you have this variable that needs to turn into a parameter, you can just right click here and say, hey, go ahead and promote this to a parameter. It automatically makes a scalar for you Ooh. and connects it to the node. Just another tip so for you. So many tips for you guys. Very, very important. So what are we going to call this? Uh, this is the light intensity, right? That's right. Emissive strength. Okay, cool. So hit apply and hit save. Right now it's at zero. Let's change this to one. Perfect. And if we go ahead and open up our in instance, we can go ahead and control this intensity, of course. But keep it to one and then let's place everything and see how they're going to look. Yeah, and let's also convert this to a parameter so we can change the color. Do you want to? Of course. Because mm. we want to change the mood, right? Yeah. Emissive color. And hit apply and save. Very cool. Okay. So we have everything ready to go. We're going to close this guy. We have the small light, the big light, and then we have this guy. How we can merge two meshes together? Because we don't want to carry the base and the light itself all the time, right? Yeah. And then imagine the amount of lights we're going to have, like the amount of meshes we're going to have because it's now two of them. And we also don't want to have to control both separately. So when you have this one, the light and the, it says rectangle too. Let's call this light base so it's clear. I think we already did this, didn't we? Maybe we didn't. So we have the light and the light base. Let's forget about this two right now. Hide it, hide it. These two want to become one mesh, right? And right now, they do not exist inside our content drawer as one mesh. So we need to create that. How do we do it? Well, we're going to select the base, select the light, 
And then we're going to go to actor at the top. And we're going to look for merge actors. And there's a bracket for two because those are two different actors that you're trying to merge. If there's more, it's going to show up right there. You're looking for merge. When you hit merge, it's going to say, okay, we're going to turn this into a static mesh. Give me a name. Give me a name and also a place to save it. So let's go ahead in our content folder. Let's create a new folder. Call it light mesh, right? I don't know, just any name. And then call this small light. Small light. Boom. Just like that, we have created a static mesh, as you can see, that we can now drag and drop into our scene. And it comes as one single mesh. And guess what? If you go towards the details panel, you'll see it has two slots for your material. So you can always switch out the base and switch out the light. Impressive. This is why we did the materials first. If you were to merge these two together while having the same gray material, you'll only have one slot, which means you cannot change them anymore. So now that we've created this, we can go ahead and hide the original or delete it, delete if, you, it. If, if you're not going to use it anymore. In case you want to keep it for safety reasons, you can, but we don't need it. So now we have this mesh. I'm going to move it to a new folder, right? Create a new folder. Call it Big, big Pillar Lights. Okay. <laughs> big Pillar Lights, right? Because we're going to have a lot of them now. And then we're going to just move them to... This guy right here. Let's hide these guys. They're annoying me right now. Hit F to focus. And we're going to bring it up here. So Farhad, I'm going to create a lot of these lights. How do I do it? Alt. Oh, no. We are going to use pattern because well, we are going to create more than one. So yes. I don't want to alt six times. And guess what? If you use alt, you have to manually figure out yes. where they have to be placed. Right? There is a quicker way to do this. And that is? Pattern. Where do we find it? Modeling tab. Modeling tab. So You're select this guy. modeling a lot, actually. Yeah, that's why it's useful. So we're going to go to the modeling tab right here. And then we're going to go to X form. And while having this selected, go to pattern. Boom. And pattern has many different functions. So first of all, you can create a pattern in a line, in a grid. Right? If you move this, you'll see what it is. And see, it's a grid. Or in circles. Super oh. cool. <laughs> Super cool, right? So we're going to go to line, and Farhad, this is not correct. No, we want y-axis. We don't want x-axis. So change it to a different direction of yes. y-axis. The extent is controlling their distance, which is great. We need yeah. that. And there's too many of them. How many do we need? Six, maybe. Six. Let's try six. Yeah. This looks perfect, but it's I definitely bigger. Many, yeah. It's definitely bigger. No, I think, I think the, the extent, yes. the, the, the distance. Get them closer. Get them what do you closer. think about this? Uh, let's try it. Let's maybe give it a try. It, yeah. So what do we do now? Rotate it 45 degrees. Yes. Okay. And then let's boop, push rotate it, it. Okay. And then we just move it. Yes. Move it. And let's see. So I don't think that was 45 degrees. I might have done a mistake there. But let's move it closer. Let's try to eyeball this and see if this is working or not. Definitely the rotation is off. I need to rotate it again one more time to make sure it's flat. Again, you can use the snapping tool here to make sure you're precise. Okay. Push this in. And Farhad. If that it, uh, is it's not centered. It's not centered, definitely yes, not. But I think centered. the distance is too far off. No, no, it's, it's good. You bring it lower a bit. Just a little bit okay. less. Uh, a little bit. Okay. Yes. Maybe five lights. What do you say about that? Five? I think five will be five just will, fine. Yes. Okay. So bring it lower a bit. So the problem is right now, Farad. I wanna, I wanna bring this up, slanted, just like on its own axis. I cannot do that because the gizmo is staying according to the world axis. How can I change there it? There is something called global and local positions. And it's on the top right. So we never talked about this before. No, but if time you go to talk and about it now. Yes. Toggle between the world. This is the world, the globe. And then local. It's going to define the current rotation of your object and then change the gizmo to match it. And right now, because this is already rotated, guess what? We can now go ahead and pull it up on the same axis. So we don't have to go up, left, up, left. This is going to come in real handy. So this is the button that you can use to toggle between world and local axes. And Let's see from the front. That is looking really good. Cent make it center. Center align. Oh my, nah, a bit to the right. Yes, this is Perfect. looking really good. Yes. Yummy. Accept Amazing. before it crashes. Okay. All right. This is, this is really good. Yes. This is really good. Accept. Amazing. Okay. Hit accept. We're done. Yes. So we created a new pattern. It's not in the big pillar lights. So let's go ahead and drop it there. Let's call it small light pattern. Pattern. Okay, cool. Now we need to duplicate it to the other columns. Exactly. So now that we have the perfect 
shape and perfect pattern, we can go at back to our normal mode, uh, normal transform, and then now, using the local, again, because we want to move it on the same axis, we're going to hold Alt and then just drag it to the side. Yes. Right? Perfect. Just a little bit more. And then hold Alt again. Drag it all the way here. Hit yes. S. Go closer. Go out of the modeling mode. We don't need that right now. This is perfect. Now, Farhad, I want to create the same lights for the ceiling. How do I do it? Uh, select all three. Select all three. Alt. Take Alt. It, take it out. Okay, I'm going to go back to global. Hold Alt to take it out. And then I want to I wanna mirror this. How do I do it? So mirror it over the Z axis so it will go and reflect it on the top side. So I can go ahead, while having all of this selected, go and right click. Go. So you have a bunch of different options, okay? The one we're going to use is transform and mirror. So this is going to mirror it on different axes. And we just have to play around with the different X, Y, and Z axes to find out which one works for us. So which axes are we trying? Z. Z. Boom. Boom. Just like that, it's mirrored it perfectly on the Z axis. And guess what? We can now just drag these guys up. It's going to be at the perfect angle once we pull these in. We're going to hit F just to get closer. And then go back to local so we can move it on the same local axis. Pull it up. Pull it out ever so oh, slightly. Done. And guess what? If you go up close to it, I think okay. we finished one yes. side. Now select all six. What, are we going to mirror again? Yes, for the other okay, side. Okay, let me just check this out. Yeah, it's perfect. Dude, it's perfect. Okay, so select all six. And all now go back to out. global. Go back to global, right? So that we can move it just on the global x-axis. And then we want to go ahead and duplicate. So hold alt and then click and drag. And all we have to do is just mirror, mirror this. Flip yes. it. So how do we do it? Mirror Y. Right click. Right click. Try the mirror. See which one works for you. But for us, it's mirror Y, and it's as simple as that. We don't have to go ahead and duplicate them one by one. Okay, and we're going to bring it all the way to the right. Hit F, make sure we go up close. Make sure we see what we're doing. A Push bit it more in. And done. And done. Wow. Let's go to the small columns now. Okay. All the big ones are done. Big ones are done. Yes. Big boys are done. You can delete the small light, by the way. The small light, yes. the first one that yes. we created. F. We don't need it anymore because we already created our pattern, right? So now it's up to the next lights that we created. Unhide them. Remember these two? So we want to put these on the smaller pillars. We're going to use the exact same method. But instead of using the pattern, since we have weird patterns, we have like a small one and a big one and a big one and a small one, we're going to manually create the duplicates. But then for the mirroring, we're going to use exactly the same method. Okay. So I'm going to take these two. I should name them. So I will call this bi uh, small pillar light and small pillar light two B. So All this right. is this is S for small. Okay, and then I'm gonna take these two into a new folder, create a new folder, call this small pillar light. Okay, cool. So I have these two guys. Let's go ahead and select both, and then drag them all the way to my smaller pillars. Let's start with the first one. Okay, let's bring it up. And then we have to go ahead and rotate them. Hit E, and then rotate 45 degrees. Should be the angle we want. And then bring it closer here. And we just want to insert it inside the wall. We don't need bases for this. If you want to create bases for it, you are more than welcome to do so. Make sure it's center aligned. Farad, I think it is center aligned. Yeah, but is. I think the lights are a little small. What do you say? Compared uh, compared to the actual pillar. So I'm going to change this to the local. Okay. Right? So I can pull this light up a little bit. And then I'm going to scale both of them. So I'm going to select both. I'm going to scale both of them on all axes. I want them to be a bit bigger. Oh, yes. This yes, is looking a lot nicer. So this add one more. So maybe control alt. I'm going to the big one. Yes. I'll just pull this down a, a little bit. Again, this is dependent on your taste. You can change the way your lights look. This is how we're going to go for it. So duplicate this guy one more time here. And then do two, one more small. One more small. So Alt on the local axis. Duplicate. Bring it up here. And let's see what that looks like. I think can we have we space one for one small. more small one. One more small one. Okay. Alt and duplicate. Yeah, let's look at it from afar. I think that looks perfect. That looks amazing. Are we going to merge actor here again? 
Absolutely, right? Why do we want to keep all these different names where we can just have one static mesh since we know the shapes are all going to be the same? So once you have everything selected, we're going to go to Actor. And now we have five different meshes. We're going to merge. In the same folder, Light Mesh, we're going to create the big mm -hmm. lights. Yeah. I don't know, big lights. Name them whatever you want. <laughs> we are horrible at naming. So we have the big lights right here. Let's go ahead and bring the big lights into the scene and just replace this one with the big light. So I'm going to pull it up, Let's try to eyeball it and see where it is so we can remove the original. And maybe I can actually already remove it. So big pillar lights, it's not what we're looking for. Small pillar lights, delete them. We don't need them. And I can just take this. Now it's just one mesh, one material. Bring it lower and move it to the left. Farhad, what do you say? Bring it lower a bit. Also. Lower? So bring it lower a bit. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. What do you say? Good. Duplicate. Let's go. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this right now. Like so. Boom. We're going to fast forward this so you guys can see it's the exact same workflow that we did before. Duplicate it. Now it's time to mirror Z again. Transform, mirror Z. To put it all the way up there. Pull it up. Paris, did you know who sponsored this video? Polycam. <laughs> what is Polycam? Polycam is a photo scanning application that is available on your devices, your phone, mobile devices, and also on the web. So if you are looking to create photorealistic scenes and you're suffering from your models looking horrible or just taking too much time to build, you can just go ahead to the real world, scan anything using your phone or your drone, and then bring it to your 3D software and have it look absolutely gorgeous. That's what Polycam is. Thank you. Okay, now we have all of these guys. I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to bring it to small pillar lights. And then, Farah, what do we do? Alt. Duplicate. Yes. And then mirror on. Y. Right click. Transform. Mirror on Y axis. Beautiful. So we just mirrored it on the other axis. Nice. We're going to bring it and stick it into the wall. Oh my God! Amazing! We did it! We did. One final thing. Let's. Wait, wait, can you can just look? Look at this! Look at this beauty! We did it! You guys did it, guys! If your scene looks something like this, you are a pro now. Freaking good! Yes. And again, if you've made mistakes, if your scene doesn't look like this, don't be afraid to go back and try again. This is our tenth time creating this spaceship. We didn't get it right in the first time. No way. So again, don't worry. Go back, try again. Now, hold, hold up. up! Did you know that you can use photogrammetry to create highly photorealistic scenes by taking what exists in the real world into 3D? We've been using Polycam to do exactly that using our phone and drone. That's right. And shout out to them for sponsoring this video, giving you guys 30% off their promo plan. The promo code is bad decisions. No, 30% off their plan. <laughs> Not the promo plan. <laughs> they don't have a promo plan. <laughs> 30% off their plan. Pro no, plan. Good. Pro plan. Use the code bad decisions in the link in the description. Let's continue. Now, Farah, what do we have next? The window at the back. So oh. we need to have the emissive window. Let's yes. go and do it. Okay, cool. So for the emissive window, we are going to pull out our mesh and create a an extra part in front of the spaceship to create that emissive light, right? And to show you guys the reference, it's right here. This is what we're trying to create. So, Farad, we're going to hit our spaceship again, and then we're going to go to the modeling tab. Now, what we need to do, we can go ahead to create, we, we can go ahead and create the shape again from beginning, but why the hell do we want to do that? But well, we can go ahead and copy this exact shape. So, I'm just going to change our view from lit to unlit because it's really dark. I just want to see these sides. And I'm going to go to model, go to polygroup edit. And make sure I'm only selecting faces, so disable vertices, disable edges. And once I have that, I'm going you to... You want to uncheck the hit back? Thank you. Yeah. You saved my life. You saved my life. I want to go ahead now and select this outer layer, all of these faces, so that I can go ahead and duplicate it, pull it out, and then extrude it, and then make that my light, right? So copy the exact same shape. You'll understand exactly why in a moment. So just go ahead and select the outer edge. So again, select one, shift, hold shift, and then select, select, 
select all right so as you can see i've already selected everything but also selected all these random things so control drag deselect everything else that was selected we don't need any of these guys make sure you go around your spaceship make sure you check that you've selected nothing by mistake and there's nothing else that is yellow which is perfect and i've lost this already god damn it okay, select 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 okay we are good now we want to go ahead and duplicate these faces so we can pull it out. I don't want it to be the same part of the mesh. So I'm going to hit duplicate and it's already done it. So all I have to do is pull it out. See? One, two, three. Boom. Pull it out. Perfect. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. So now we have some distance from the main spaceship, which is fine. This is a spaceship. It's sci-fi. We can do that. It's like floating in the air, which is perfect. Now I want to go ahead and create an extrusion so that it's actually having some depth. So while everything is already selected, just go to extrude and it's already on fix from before. So we're going to use a positive value and go ahead and pull this guy out. I want it to be pretty damn thick. That's what I like. <laughs> that sounded very yeah. wrong. Okay, okay, that sounded very wrong. I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. Oh my God. Okay. That's the truth. Uh, it is No, no. I, I take Kids it back. Kids are watching. Nope. Okay. All right. Farah, what do you think about this? Okay, I think this is pretty good. cool. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. All right, we went really thick with this one. Not that I like it. Just, yeah, Single direction works here because they're all facing the outer side, all the faces, so it works. And we're going to hit accept. Now, I need to go ahead. If I go back to the interior, I still don't have, check this out, I still don't have these edges that are turning into my light. So if you go closer, first of all, it's coming outside. You have this one layer, which is still your metal, and we have this uh, emissive lights. And then you have the one big layer, which is the actual big, big, big light. So, Farah, how do we do it? Insert edge loop. Okay, so polygroup edit. Cut it to half, yes. Yeah. I'm going to go to insert edge loop, and we don't need this to be even anymore. We can just lay down one cut. So, we want the outer layer to be extruded inwards. Yes. So let's just leave a line maybe somewhere here. Yes. I think that's pretty good. And then we're going to extrude this part towards the middle side. So we need so to select the faces now. Absolutely. So we're going to hit accept, go back to polygroup edit, and we're going to select this outer edge right here. Boom. Okay. Farad, seems like we got it selected. Yes. So what do we do now? Now we need to extrude. Extrude, but it's going towards a single direction again. So let's go and change this again to selected triangle normals and now it's mm. working just fine so it's coming in but it's too, too much. much too much let's show the wireframe so that we make sure we're not breaking anything and wow this, this is good this is looking good so the number is 350 for us so 350 i really like this 340 350 i think it's fine 350 perfect what do you say yeah perfect hit accept Okay, let's go back to the lit mode. Let's see what this looks like. We need to add the material now. Yes, absolutely. So this is perfect. We already have the edge, and I love how it looks. But right now, we don't have any light. So we're going to go back to the unlit mode so it's easier to see. What we need to do, if you look closer to our reference, we have the outer edge, which is still the metal, and then the inner edge, which is larger, is going to be our light. So this is going to be a tip that we're going to use, which is going to come in really handy. Usually you do this in other softwares because they're much faster. It's not as fast in Unreal, but again, it's really good to know how it works. What we have to do is, let's go back to selection mode. If you select our spaceship, we only have one slot for one material because the entire mesh is using the metal material. We need to go ahead and say, hey, for these specific polygons, I want to add a new material and I want it to be emissive. So we need to add a material slot and define those polygons. So first, for those polygons to exist, we need to go ahead and create another edge loop. Let's go to the modeling tab and then go to our poly group edit and see right now if we want this exact look, we don't have it because look, the moment we actually extrude inwards, it's just one face all across the whole thing so if you make it emissive it's all going to be emissive we don't have this look so we're going to add in another edge loop to keep the metal there so let's find where that edge loop is going to live i'm, I'm still looking for it 
waiting for it to make itself. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, there yeah. you go. All right. So, Farhad, let me know where you think yeah. would be the right place. So, I like it with high edge, yes. Higher, higher. So, something yes. like this. Yes. So, we have yes. the bottom half metal. The top half will be emissive. So, click OK. And right now, we can see this part can be left as metal. So, hit accept. Now, we're going to go, this time around, we're going to go to another section to change the materials. And that one is going to be right here in the attributes and edit materials. Okay, this might seem a little bit confusing. Honestly, it could have been simpler. I think Unreal Engine needs to work on this specific thing right here, but we still know how to use it and we're going to teach you how to do it. So instead of a selection tool, you're given a paintbrush, which is it's way huge. too big, which is way too big. So let's make it smaller, size, lower. And if this is not small enough for you, you can actually go to advance, specify radius, and actually go even smaller with the value, okay? Now, we need to go ahead and paint on top of the polygons that we want to go ahead and change. So, Farhad, shall we? Let's go. We know it's this one, right? It's this it, one it's right exactly here. It's exactly like selecting your face. Yes. But now there's like, it's showing the wireframe with triangles. Yeah. So, it's an extra, extra faces that we have to select. But you know already the shape of the light, right? Okay, cool. And this works for anything, right? You want to change the material of anything on the mesh? You can do it, even on imported models from, you know, online resources. Is this this one? Oh, my God. It's so confusing, even for me right now. Okay, painting, painting, painting. Painting. This has to be better. There has to be a better way. Okay, cool. Okay. We have everything. But I think we've got it, right? Yeah. Look at it from afar, and you'll notice that has to be our emissive layer. Okay, so this part, pay close attention. You have to go all the way down here and then look at the materials, okay? So drop down the material. Right now it says the active material is this specific material, the world grid material. No, we want to change this to an emissive material. So first off, we need to add that extra material. We're going to click add. And then here, we're going to look for the emissive material that we've already created. If you haven't created it, go ahead and create it. So emissive. Emissive. Did we call it light emissive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We call it light emissive, yes. right? We want to use the instance material so we can change the color and everything. So we're going to choose that. Now, it's not done yet. We have to go ahead and change the active material to this light material right here. Boom. Not done yet. This is the last step. You have to go ahead, not hit accept, but assign active material to change it. One, two, three. Boom. Boom. And when you do it, you can see the change made, and that's when you can say adios, hit accept, and you're done. Once it's done, you go back to selection mode, go back to lit, and see the change made. Wow. And you, my friend, have successfully created the edge light of your material. This looks amazing. And guess what, Farad? One last thing really quickly that I want to show you. Because if we go to our ship, right now we have two material slots. You can always go ahead and change this material, and that one is going to change. But guess what? We're going to open this guy up, and since all of our lights are connected, everything is going to work together. So if we go ahead and change this emissive material to red, look at what happens. Mm. Change it to blue, look at what happens. And then increase the intensity. Do you see that? Yep. Everything changes together. Now, Farhad, what do we have coming up next in the so, upcoming chapter? All right, guys, we are done with chapter nine. Next chapter would be Farhad's favorite, post-process volume. What we're going to do is add filters to our screen, like glow, bloom, vignette, maybe some film grain to really spice things up. And our scene is just going to automatically look better in the next video. So make sure you catch it. Ciao.